to my workshop. Ah, uh, yes, it fits in, doesn't it? And not only that, if I turn the vehicle around, it fits in with the camper roof open, so I can work on it. Phase two of the Land Cruiser build. And you know something? This is not the first time I've uttered those words. Welcome to my Land Cruiser Troopy build phase two. That was at the end of July while I was still on the canning stock route. I spent 16 days in the bush, camping with it and driving over all kinds of widely varying terrain. And there are some changes that I'm going to make. And since then, I've done the Holland track. I like to start looking for a campsite at about four. And, well, blazed about quite a bit. And have come up with a list of things that I want to do, need to do. Some of the things I've already done. But in preparation for my Trans Australia trip this year and Trans America's trip next year, i got some work to do, and I've got two months to complete it. However, critically though, is this little piece of paper. With all these ideas in mind, I started thinking, wait, 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 wait is your enemy, how I needed to know how heavy the vehicle actually is. And of course, the calculation is, well, one always get it wrong. And I was quite diligent in weighing stuff, and, and I still got it wrong by quite a bit. So I put it on a Weybridge. And, uh, that's your front, and that's your rear weights. Yeah, that's not too bad at all. That's actually lighter in the front than it is in the rear. Front axle weight 1,450 kilos, rear axle 1,640 kilos, total weight 3,090 kilograms. That includes 90 litres of fuel in the back tank, no fuel in the front tank and probably 25 to 30 kilograms of stuff in the back. I took a lot out, but I didn't unpack absolutely everything. For example, I left in the tools, I left in the jack, I left in some stuff. But now I can calculate where I'm going to be when I've finished phase two. And my gut says, you're going to be, you might even be over max GVM by the time you're finished and by the time the vehicle is fully loaded. I don't want to do a GVM upgrade and that's going to be a challenge. One of the first things I did when I got back from the canning stock route was uh, come up with a solution for the Max tracks. Um, I didn't want them on the roof, I want them reasonably easy to access if I need them. I don't want to go clambering everywhere. And this is a product that was designed by Quick Pitch Campers and I should add Myself as well, I uh, was involved in the design process and basically one moving part. Nothing to come out, nothing to fall off, nothing to get lost in the mud. We decided that it would be really nice to be able to fit two or four max tracks on the same bracket. A little bit over, like that. And that's what we've managed to do. All I need to do is move okay. four pins and I'm going to put four. So it's part of my challenge with keeping weight down. I was going to put one of these, another one of these on the other side of the vehicle. I'm now not going to. I will fit four max tracks here and save some weight. And of course, this is the table, which turned out to be on the Holland track when I first used it and tested it. Absolute delight. Again, so convenient, so easy and Anyway, that was, that was a nice story, actually. The development of that was great fun. What I love about this process is that not long ago, these were just drawings and now coming to life. And this is the prototype being assembled and a few adjustments being made, not only right here, but to the drawings. But it goes along with the concept that everything you carry on your vehicle, if possible, should do more than one job. Here is a rather nice little piece of kit, uh, only available in Australia, uh, $35 I think it cost me. It's a two inch extension on the gear stick. It's slightly tapered, very nicely machined out of stainless steel and it just makes driving a little bit more comfortable. Instead of having to reach down for the gear stick, it falls into my hand and also one of the nice parts about it is that if I'm in 
fifth gear, I can adjust my radio holding, resting my hand on it. Uh, a little thing, but with a big result, I think. This strap is to stop the roof overextending itself and damaging the light. There isn't quite enough height for it to open all the way. I'm not a big one for driving at night, but I do know that sometimes uh, it's just plain unavoidable and I want to put in good lighting. Probably a light bar up top, I'll look and see how much light gets reflected and bounces back into my face off the bonnet, but I think that because of my sun visor, it, that might be minimal. And two small spotlights here, uh, I keep them small because I don't want to interfere with the airflow into the engine. Uh, that can cause all kinds of problems. In terms of the engine, nothing. Oh, I'm wrong. I have done something. Under here is a catch can. Um, excess oil, instead of ending up in the inlet manifold, is diverted into an oil catch can. It's advisable on most turbo diesel engines, particularly the V8. Uh, that will just mean that, well, it'll just stay more, the engine will stay more efficient for longer, really. Lighting in the back, I'm putting a floodlight up top for when arriving in a campsite, particularly if I'm driving with other people and we need a nice bit of uh, lighted area for them to pitch their tents or even just general, general stuff up top. Uh, controlled from the front that I can also use it as a reversing light if I'm reversing in a situation where I'm setting up camp and there's I need lots of light behind me when reversing controlled from the driver's seat and I've done something else in the lighting in here which might be of interest I've been wanting to try this for a while my idea is that insects we know are attracted more strangely to incandescent than LED. Cannot explain it, but insects can be a real problem, particularly when camped near water. Now what an insect cannot see is very red light, and the human eye actually gets used to that red light very, very quickly. So what I've done is I've put in another system into my vehicle, which is a series of red LEDs. Now, that's very red to my eyes, but after a, not a very long time, that will become less red, less red, and I'm using a little device here, and this whole thing cost me $12. And it's remote, and I can turn up the lights or down. So that's 25%, that's 50%, and that is 100%. And let's have a look here. That's yeah, that's maximum brightness. That is enough for me to read and do reasonably detailed work. And after a while, of course, my eyes will get very used to it. And um, well, that's an experiment. And I'll next time I'm camping near a river, I'll do some tests with incandescent, LED, and red LED. I want to carry two spare wheels and I've been asked well if you've had so much success with these tires and so few punctures why are you taking a second spare I I don't have a good answer I'm, I want to carry two spares I think that the spare wheel carrier has been made for so long that designers have just kind of left it alone it's okay it works why invest lots of time and effort in making it better? And that's why they're all so similar, except for the one that I've chosen. I believe that they have looked at it and said, that's not good enough. This could be done better, and, and it works. It's just better. And so I, I, I've ordered one, and it is from South Africa, and it's made in Cape Town, and it's due here in six weeks' time. And I'll show that to you as we fit it. It's just... I'll put in a uh, spade mount. Um, I have a second spade inside, a smaller one, that I use for toilet duties and things like this. But this mainly is a recovery shovel. So I wanted to basically put it up here. You know who makes a nice one? Runner rack. 
They make some very nice ones. They make some for the typical Australian um, long handle shovels that don't have any handle. It's just a just a, a rod basically as a handle. A lot of people like those and they're very long handle. And uh, they have those. They also have a multi-purpose um, shovel mount which I liked a lot. Although they tended to stick out. There's a big knob that kind of sticks out the side. And I didn't, I wasn't, but they were well made and they were made of metal. This is made by this company. I actually saw this Yakima um, Australian company and I, I, I bought this set and I think that this might actually be nicer. What's nice about it is it's lockable um, and it it's also can carry anything from a 30 mil, in fact I think even less than a 30 mil diameter to 50 mil diameter. So I will be changing the standard mounting bolts with stainless steel. And the other question I have, how long will this last? The little cam is made out of plastic and the little ratchet is also plastic. So I wonder how long they'll last. Well, I'm not, I'm not convinced that it's that good actually. The quick pitch on suite. This is now the third one I've had on the vehicle. First was a loose vinyl bag, the second one was a box. This is the final production version in the final production bag. They do make it in the box in the bag. I've chosen the bag because uh, I think it's, well, it's lighter. And I actually think it's, I think the bag, the box is overkill for my purposes. I have filled the inside of this vehicle with these things. These are uh, rails for attaching uh, eyes so that at any stage during any trip if I have something that I need to put in here and strap down I can do it. I've got them down there, up there, there, down there, down there, up there, more down there. You can never have too many rails. I think I've got too many rails. Here is something, a quite a fun, a dash cam. Um, I decided that a dash cam would be a good idea because, well, you know, I don't want to miss anything. So I had to get a ga da gash de cam that would shoot the best possible quality so that I could actually use it in my programs if necessary. And so I googled and right at the top of Google was Dash Cam Owners Australia. That's a good name for a company distributing gash dash in Australia. Very good. And this is one of their best models, and I shall be fitting it, and uh, it's nice, isn't it? That is obviously a polarizing filter. Good thinking to reduce the reflection of the windshield. Mounting tabs, electrical stuff, cable stuff, GPS receiver, okay. Yes, more of that later. In at least three of my pre previous four-wheel drives, I've had a center console fridge. And the idea being that driving along, lean over, and the drinks are cold, not kind of cold, heading for warm, because they've been lying around on the center console for the last half hour. Uh, I'm talking nonsense. Take two. Many of our vehicles have had a center console because it's nice having nice, really cold drinks immediately to hand. Oh, okay, so here it is here. This is a, I don't know how many liter, Snowmaster fridge designed for center consoles. I put it just behind me here because actually the um, consoles.com.au Department of the Interior Consoles. Wow, I'm making a meal of this. This is very comfortable. I don't want to take it out. Okay, now this is quite cool. This here is from Camp Cover, and it's uh, nice big pouches for uh, for for, uh, for for what? Hmm, clothes. Yes, one of the challenges that I had on the canning stock is I had a separate bag with all my clothes, and I found it kind of a little bit awkward moving it around all the time. And of course, when that's up, that's completely out of the way. And when it's down, I'm not sitting in here. Anyway, so that there is usable space, and that's perfect for clothes, and it happens to fit exactly. 
I want them to make me another one with two big pouches because I want a place to put towels and jackets. Fishing rods. Out of the way, using up dead space. I'm inspired to share something with you with regards to laying out the back of your vehicle. This area here is prime real estate. So whatever you pack here and here and here and here have to be things that A, you're going to use every time you go camping or B, you're going to need to get to quickly while on the road. One of the two. So this open space here in place of a second drawer, this inside here is, is so valuable to me. The fact that there isn't a drawer to me is, is if you do that, don't put a drawer in there. Ah, man, it's useful space. And if I'm, say, making a cup of tea, for example, all right, I might want to put things here. I might want to put things here. On here, access here, put things here. This is the usable area around the vehicle. And I've noticed a lot of European designs, and I don't like them at all. Trip carriers designed for camping, not unlike this, they have this right up to here. There's, there's nowhere to do anything. There's n you can't put anything anywhere because there's no shelf space close to the back. And secondly, if I want to get, with those vehicles, if I want to get anything, anything, I have got to do this. Only now can I get the soap. Don't get I just I just I just sometimes think that those people that design them they don't go camping. I just I just it's to me it is so obvious. You cannot go up and down, up and down, up and down, just to get a packet of salt. You have to have access, 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 access. How much can I find just by standing here? And then if I'm inside, I can also get to it. Anyway, that's my little rant for this week. Well today anyway. I have about two and a half months to complete phase two before the vehicle is put on a truck and shipped to Melbourne uh, because after that I will have no time at all to work on the vehicle uh, trans Australia then while I'm in Africa it gets shipped to the United States that's the plan anyway so I've got to do all of this work and over the next two months follow me on YouTube subscribe and watch the progress. Oh, there's one thing I didn't mention that I've also got to do, and this is primarily for my Trans Americas trip. During my Trans Americas trip, I am going to be on the road for six ish months, and I'm going to have to be doing editing in the back of this truck. And right now, my posture like this is terrible. I, I, on canning in the evenings, uh, after an hour sitting like this, I would have quite a bad backache because m the posture is just completely wrong. So I need a place where I can kick back and edit, which means a cushion here, soften. I have put one. It's not soft enough. Something supportive. Something supportive behind me to support my back and a natural place to work. So I'll have a monitor that I can lift up Okay, so maybe it'll be here and I can slide it up and then something that I can, I, I don't know, to be honest with you. I must, I think I must go and ask Yucky to help me design something because that's quite a tricky thing. Sit, work, chill, sleep and do that almost every day because what I want to do is post videos, or semi-live videos, almost every day while traveling through the most interesting parts of Transamerica.
which means this ends up being an edit room. If you would like to be part of what I do and help me make more videos, support me on Patreon. Click the Patreon button on the screen now.